I'm in love! I'm in love! <laughs> Yippee! Ah. Is he new? I do my own stuff! Welcome to the fifth inaugural episode of the Cruising Altitude podcast, the only podcast focusing entirely on the actor uh, Tom Cruise. My name is Blake, also known as Smokey's Videos, you may know me, and this is my co-host Saul. Hello. We're still not very good at this. <laughs> we're only five episodes in and we're still not good. <laughs> Um, today's topic is the 1983 film, Risky Business. So your folks are going out of town. Just use your best judgment. You know we trust you. You got the place all to yourself? <laughs> A good time, Joel. In the privacy of your own home. Just take those old records off the shelf! Her. She's fantastic. Yeah. I said, to Did you have a good time last night? <laughs> I had a great time. Today's music ain't got the same song. You ever get high, Joe? Don't let me do anything stupid. Don't worry. I like that old time rock and roll. Who's the U boat commander? Don't try to take me to a disco. I don't remember giving permission for a party, Joe. A party? I still like I've got a trig midterm tomorrow, and I'm being chased by Guido, the killer pimp. And the music just soothes the soul. Doesn't anyone want to accomplish anything, or do we just want to make money? Make money. Make a lot of money. There's a time for playing it safe. And a time for risky business. I still have the losing it theme stuck in my head. <laughs> <laughs> just because it's like kind of the same thing. Is it? I mean... Uh... Is it really? Oh, not the song, but like kind of... The, no, the movie? Yeah, the themes about losing your innocence. I get... Uh, yeah. And Tom Cruise does have sex with an older woman. Again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Tom Cruise, you want to hear some four fun facts about him? Sure. I haven't read these. I just sort of copied and pasted them. Oh. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Cameron Diaz and Tom Cruise star in the movie Night and Day. Cameron Diaz is obviously taller than Tom Cruise at five foot nine, while Tom Cruise is five foot seven. However, throughout the movie, mm -hmm. throughout the movie, it would be an in it would be interesting to note that Tom always looks taller than Cameron. I feel like that wasn't worth it. <laughs> <laughs> um, people, they do that a lot, like in Hollywood. Like I'm pretty sure Bruno Mars is shorter than Cardi B. But for, like, their album, he looks He looks, stands than... on an Apple box? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had to do that in um, Tropic Thunder with, I think, Ben Stiller and uh, Robert Downey Jr. Because one of them is taller than the other. <laughs> um, in 1994, he was awarded Man of the Year by Harvard's Hasty Pudding Club. Mm, that's, uh, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> Known for its production featuring Harvard men in drag. Accordingly, he accepted the award wearing bra and heels. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's interesting. The Hasty Pudding Club. Do they do they eat uh, pudding really fast? No, they only uh, they record it. Oh, it's like the first ASMR. No, they don't eat it. They just record pudding. <laughs> <laughs> they record the process of it sitting out in the sun. Ew. Yeah, that's what they're doing with Harvard's money. Mm-hmm. During production of War of the Worlds, Tom Cruise has had a Scientology tent set up with volunteers, where Scientology materials were distributed. Oh. <laughs> Do <you> know, <laughs> does it say, like, what they were? No. Oh. I assume they were doing the audit things, where they, like, test you or whatever, and then just, like, L. Ron Hubbard books, <laughs> which, um... Do you know the Humane Society thrift store up here? Mm-hmm. I was in there the other day looking for Tom Cruise movies because I don't know if you know this audience, but the best place to find Tom Cruise movies is just to go to your local like Goodwill or thrift store. <laughs> but um, I was in there and they had L. Ron Hubbard books. Oh. <laughs> and I was thinking about buying them. 
Um, oh, so that's what all these books are? Yeah, all those ones <laughs> over there. You see that big shelf? It's uh, a lot of the same copies, just with different covers. But, I mean, I had to have them. Mm-hmm. Uh, this relates back to, I believe, last episode where I talked about Tom Cruise and how he has a plane that he flies yeah. from World War II. Mm-hmm. He got his pilot's license in 1994. Oh, that's cool. How old was he then? Mm, 32? Okay. So, let's move on to some risky business facts. This is the uh, synopsis title thing. A ch... I already fucked up. (laughs) (laughs) A Chicago teenager is looking for fun at home while his parents are away, but the situation quickly gets out of hand. Oh boy, does it. (laughs) (laughs) Something gets in that hand. A boob. A booby. Some boobies. The birds. The bird. A booby. (laughs) Uh You having a stroke? (laughs) (laughs) Um, It's too early. (laughs) It's too early. It's not even five o'clock yet, and I'm already having a stroke. Um, This is the tagline that's on the poster. There's a time for playing it safe, and a time for dot 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 risky business, which is it, like it's dot dot dot, and then the title right there. Oh yeah, you get it? Mm-hmm. Because yeah. it, like it works in the title and the the oh, saying, yeah, yeah. 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 It's just, because it's risky business. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was directed by Paul Brickman, and I think he also wrote it. Stars Rebecca De Morn. Re- Rebecca De Mornay, Joe Pantoliano, Panto Liano. I'm not doing very good for myself. <laughs> uh, Nicholas Pryor, Janet Carroll, Curtis Armstrong, Bronson Pincott, and Tom Cruise. These are weird names. Mm-hmm. I can, Rebecca, Joe. I know, right? <laughs> Curtis. Comment below if your name is Curtis. <laughs> don't comment below. Stop listening right now. We don't want you. Uh, Tom Cruise during the filming was 21 years old. Curtis Armstrong was 28 years old, who plays uh, one of Tom Cruise's character, Joel's friends, Miles. They're supposed to be in high school. <laughs> again, they cast people that look like they're like divorced and married again. <laughs> no, they're teenagers. And... uh Rebecca De Mornay was 28 also, hmm. which makes more sense for her since she's yeah. a, a hooker. Call girl. Call girl. Sorry. Excuse you. If you are offended by that, please let us know in the comments or email us at thecruisingaltitude <laughs> at gmail.com, I think is what it is. Uh, it had a budget of $6.2 million, mm-hmm. which I, I think is might be on the lower scale for the past films. I don't remember the past budgets, but um, it did make... Six po- or sixty three point five million in the box office. Nice. This is what like started Tom Cruise off oh, on okay. his stardom. That's good. Yeah. Um, he, he wouldn't have to be in any more losing it. <laughs> <laughs> Was this the first movie where something doesn't like catch on fire? Aside from like the genital, like diseases he caught, no. <laughs> <laughs> or yes. Yeah. There's no fire other than. When he pees. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point, though, because every other film has had fires. Yeah. I don't know about next month's. Maybe. Maybe not. We'll have to wait There see. is a Tom Cruise fantasy film where he plays, like, a knight or something. Uh-huh. You know that, um, have you seen that photo of, like, the big muscular devil guy with, like, the giant horns? Hellboy? Close. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you might recognize it if you've seen it. Probably. It's like, I don't know, if you, I'm, I'm sure if you Google devil movie or something, he'll be like one of the top results. Mm-hmm. But um, he's in that. He's from oh. that movie. The devil. Is he the devil? They got the real devil. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, these are all things I copied from IMDb. In an effort for Tom Cruise to look more teenage in appearance, the producers put him through an unusual bit of physical training. Cruise worked out seven days a week. Wait, yeah. Worked out seven days a week in order to lose 10 pounds. Once that was accomplished, he immediately ceased working out and ate extremely fatty foods in order to add a layer of baby fat. 
That's how he achieved that fresh-faced teenage look. <laughs> the fact that they put it that way and then have him have sex with, like, an older lady. Hmm. But he looks... I mean, he does look younger, but... Yeah, he's only 21. Yeah. That was... So imagine us, but 20 years ago. <laughs> I'm also gonna take a drink. This is grape drink we got. We got yes. some bottles of 8-Ball. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was gonna say, like... If he worked out that much for seven days a week, how much did he work out in tabs? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> also, did he... It doesn't say how long he worked out for. Mm. Was it just he worked out seven <laughs> days for one week? <laughs> one week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the dance scene where Joel dances to old-time rock and roll was completely improvised. In the script, he was in simply instructed to dance to rock music. Mm-hmm. Which is why he obviously does that seizure thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, these sunglasses that Joel wears are the Ray-Ban Wayfarer model. Annual sales of Wayfarers were languishing in 1983, but skyrocketed 2,000%. Is that even possible? Appear- I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after the movie's release... This film and the Blues Brothers from 1980 have contributed to the popularity of Wayfarers since. That's good. Uh, John Cusack, Nicolas Cage, Michael J. Fox, Tom Hanks, and Sean Penn all adi- all auditioned for the role of Joel Goodson. I know some of those names. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Can you imagine this movie with Nicolas Cage? Oh my god. No, I can't. <laughs> Except he's like 38. <laughs> um, All right, Joel, now be good. Okay, I'll be good, Mom. <laughs> I'm not, I can't, I can't think of any Nicolas Cage quotes. Yeah. I bought a dinosaur skull for $8,000 and now I'm in a major debt. <laughs> I also named my son after Superman. <laughs> I was Ghost Rider. <laughs> I was going to say, he's he's wearing (laughs) the jacket. Uh, In wait, what? In 2009, in a 2009 interview with the AV Club, which is like, you heard of them? Yeah. Bronson Pincott said his strongest memory of working with 20-year-old Tom Cruise on this film was that, in Pincott's words, he was tense and made constant, constant, unrelated homophobic comments like, you want some ice cream in case there are no gay people there? What? (laughs) I should have read these beforehand. I mean, his lingo was larded with the most... There was no basis for it. It was like, it's a nice day. I'm glad there are no gay people standing here. Very, very strange. In in the same interview, (laughs) Pincott said working with Cruz was quote-unquote, weird, and called Cruz the biggest bore on the face of the earth. Is this guy, uh, is he famous? <laughs> Anymore? <laughs> That's debatable. <laughs> what is fame, Sounds really? a little jealous, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, I don't... Hmm. Maybe he was just allegedly in the closet. <laughs> also, it was the 80s. Mm-hmm. Um... Hindsight's always twenty twenty. Not saying that Tom Cruise is or is not a good person, <laughs> because we still want him to come on this show. Uh-huh. But um, let's just move on to the next topic, <laughs> or the next thing. Um, Rebecca de Mornay, born in 1959, claimed to be born in 1962, so she would seem the same age as Tom Cruise. Hmm. I should have cut that one out, because I feel like this next one works better with the AV Club one. In his autobiography, Revenge of the Nerd, Curtis Armstrong recalls working with Tom Cruise. Tom is self Tom self-identified as a born-again Christian, and the rumor was that he actually considered shepherding souls for a living. I couldn't believe it. Away from the set, initially, Tom made straight arrows look like corkscrews. I would ask him at the end of the day if he would like to join us at the bar for a drink. No, I recall him saying. Got an early call tomorrow. Got to work out still. Study my lines. I gotta work out for a week again. (laughs) (laughs) Study my lines. And then I like to read the Bible a little before bed. I laughed. He didn't. 
But then, (laughs) returning late one night, I found three or four young girls, late teens I suspect, lined up in the hall outside of Tom's room. I remember thinking, Tom's going to be really upset if these hot girls interfere with his Bible reading. So I asked them, with the stern gravitas of my 28 years, if there was something I could do to help them. They just stared at me, and at that moment, Tom's door opened and another girl came out, adjusting her hair and taking off down the hall, while the first girl in line slipped into Tom's room. This was a young man who knew something about time management and understood how to successfully juggle Bible study and (laughs) blowjobs. I went to bed alone that night, thinking it served me right for not being religious. (laughs) And our final uh, fun fact about this movie... Risky Business, is that it was originally called White Boys Off the Lake. Huh. That's, uh... <laughs> I mean, it's a literal <laughs> title. <laughs> it's more more wordy, more of a mouthful, mm-hmm. rather. Yeah. But um, that's all that I have for the, uh... Fun... No, not really fun, but facts about Risky <laughs> Business. Would you like to begin the discussion f- f- uh, portion of the podcast? Sure. Okay, I'm glad you said that. Otherwise, we would have just been sitting here. (laughs) (laughs) So, Risky Business. Set in a fucking rich suburb of Chicago in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. Tom Cruise plays Joel Goodson. Um, Is that really his name? mm -hmm, Goodson. Goodson. (laughs) Um, Who is a straight-laced kid he goes to all of his classes he's gonna get into harvard or no princeton hopefully he's part of this like after school academic club called the future enterprisers and his parents are a bunch of i don't know how would you describe them weirdos yeah they're a bunch of straight-laced weirdos who (laughs) care more about an a fabergé egg (laughs) this movie is actually a a commentary on capitalism Mm. according to the director and writer uh I can see it, I guess, loosely. I mean, there is the line where um, the kids say that they'd rather make money than help people. Yeah, that's the only thing I can think of. (laughs) Um, Anyway, Risky Business is the first Tom Cruise film where he gets top billing, baby. His name is the first one to come up after the director and the writer and the executive producer and the producer and the audio guy and the the catering. (laughs) (laughs) The film opens up in a uh, a weird dream intro with um, Joel, Tom Cruise's character, mm-hmm. uh, doing voiceover about this dream he keeps having. Wow, I just realized that that girl actually never shows up. No, oh, that's right, the shower girl. Huh. <laughs> so the dream that he keeps having is um, he rides home from school on a bike. Um, he goes to his neighbor's house instead of his house. And he discovers that the door is unlocked, so he goes in and upstairs and finds an incredibly long bathroom. Mm -hmm. And a naked woman showering. Mm -hmm. And so, what is it? Doesn't he have, like, a dialogue with her or something? Yeah. He's like, what are you doing? And she's like, taking a shower. Which, like, no shit. (laughs) (laughs) And then he's like, do you want me to go? Mm -hmm. And then she... What's she saying? She's like... (laughs) Can you lather my back? (laughs) (laughs) Or something like that? Um... And so she propositions him to join her in the shower. Mm-hmm. But as he walks down the very long bathroom, <laughs> uh, he never reaches her. And finally, it all goes dark and he like comes to in his, <laughs> in his classroom where he only has two minutes left because he showed up late. This is still a dream. Uh, and then it turns into a nightmare or something. Yeah, I, I was, I was thinking it was gonna be that classic. Oh, and I also forgot my pants. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Water break. It seems like a running theme. You ever have sex in a dream? I don't recall. <laughs> I actually don't. It always remember. ends right before you reach Pound Town. <laughs> <laughs> I actually never remember my dreams like at all. No. You just, it's because of all the, how much you drink. (laughs) (laughs) You drink to forget. (laughs) Yeah, I need to cut back. Nah, you can quit anytime you want. (laughs) Hey, just say fuck it. (laughs) Um, anyway, 
then what happens? He wakes up. He like talks about it to his friends. Oh, that's right. Was he talking about the dream or? Yeah, the oh, dream. Okay. Oh, that's right, because they're playing poker. Uh huh. So, um, Joel's friends, one of whom looks like Jake Gyllenhaal a little bit with a receding hairline. <laughs> um, I have right here. I wrote Olaf because I couldn't remember Josh Gad's name. <laughs> Is Curtis Armstrong? And Topher Grace. Oh, wow. Yeah, I see it. Uh, but they were all playing a game of poker at, I guess, Miles' house? So the friends are Miles, Barry, Glenn, and the others. <laughs> and the rest. <laughs> and the rest. It's like... <laughs> it's... Oh, what is that show? Gilligan's Island. Where the theme song had everybody's name. And then, and then the rest, who uh -huh. was two other people. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so they're having a poker game and they're just talking and smoking cigars. I guess their parents are gone as well. Or <laughs> Don't care. Yeah, they just don't <laughs> care. They're the cool parents. They're like uh, Jane Butterfield's parents <laughs> from Endless Love. <laughs> um, it's full circle. Mm -hmm. It's the same neighborhood. Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> <laughs> um, so they had that poker game and then as they're all leaving, Miles is talking to Joel about his newfound freedom because Joel reveals that his parents are going to be going out of town for an unspecified amount of time. Mm -hmm. We think it's two weeks at least. Like, mm, maybe three. Because later in the film, he gets suspended for five days from school. Yeah, and that's like at least three days? Yeah, it's like After. three or four days into his parents being gone. Hmm. Who fuck knows? <laughs> Fifty dollars would that last two weeks? I mean, in nineteen eighties money, maybe. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with all those frozen dinners he's stealing <laughs> from the bank teller in his basement. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let's see. So Miles gives him the motivational speech that sometimes you gotta say, "What the fuck? Make your move." Mm -hmm. Which is coming from the kid who will, no matter what, get into a good school. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then they have the say what the fuck thing. I have right here the graduate, because I assume the film reminded me of the movie Graduate, or The Graduate. I explained this to you earlier, but um, for people who don't know what The Graduate is, it's about a 20-something maybe, or like out of high school, early freshman college student who's living with his parents, and he doesn't know what he's going to do with his life. He's literally floating through life, as in he... Spends most of his days floating in the pool. Until one day he meets an older woman. Who is his neighbor. Mm. And they start having an affair. And then he falls in love with his... Mrs. Robinson is her name. You may have heard the Garfunkel and Oates song. Mm. Um, he falls in love with her daughter. And she's going to get with somebody else. But during the wedding at the end of the movie. He runs to her and... I don't know why I'm explaining all this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just move on. Um, so Joel's parents leave and um, we get the, I guess, interesting camera angle that is of Joel's perspective. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just Joel's perspective and the actors talk into the lens, <laughs> the camera lens. Yeah. Some of them do. <laughs> <laughs> if you're the dad, then you don't know where to look. You're looking at the camera guy. <laughs> They didn't tell him. <laughs> um, so for his first day free of parents, Joel has a big whiskey Coke, a big whiskey and Coke, and a frozen TV dinner. Literally frozen. Yeah, he didn't cook it anything. He eats it frozen. Like a barbarian. Yeah, he fucking licks it like a popsicle. <laughs> <laughs> I like to feel, I like to assume that he like didn't heat it up anymore. He just kept licking it. <laughs> he's just like is this how poor people eat <laughs> <laughs> like the bank teller <laughs> um then the most famous scene of this entire movie that has gone down in pop culture history mm -hmm. which i think i feel like anyone will think of immediately if you say the words risky followed by business is tom cruise in the hallway in his underwear in the Button up shirt slides out into the hall to uh, old time rock and roll. This scene happens 10 minutes into the film. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
not what I was I was expecting. <laughs> After all these years of seeing that scene, I did not expect this movie to turn out how it did. Yeah. <laughs> if you only see that scene, you think it's like, oh, my parents are gone, mm-hmm. like, time to party. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, technically happened, but... It happens, like, within the first 20 or so minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Tom does the splits and slides up, which I, th- I still think is very impressive. Yeah. Um, and then it just like, it hard cuts from him dancing around in his house to him at like some diner with his nerdy friends mm-hmm. and they're talking about their young entrepreneurs class thing and what they're going to do like with their lives <clears throat> And um, that's where we get the scene of Tom asking his friends and fellow students, like, hey, don't you want to, like, help people instead of, or would you rather help people or make money? And they all look at him and just say at, like, the same time, we want to make money. Exactly. And they're like, what do you want to do, Joel? (laughs) He says something along the lines of, uh, serve my fellow mankind. (laughs) What a fucking dickhead. And then they all throw food at him. (laughs) Yeah, they're like, nerd, loser, and they all leave. Um, Later, after the Future Enterprises meeting, Joel and his friend Barry are, like, working on their project for that class, which is like, what is it? It's like a phone. He connect it to your telephone so that you can take a message. Yeah. Just get, so a, like just get a notepad voicemail. and leave it by the paper. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if voicemail was around yet, but, like, why not just get a notepad and leave it by the phone? <laughs> yeah, I didn't really get the point of that. <clears throat> um, but as they're, like, working on their project, Joel's other friend, the kid from The Mask, Glenn, comes over to Joel's <laughs> house to fuck his girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Glenn's girlfriend. I assume it's his girlfriend. Maybe not. Maybe it's just a fling. But he comes over. He's like, hey, Joel, I heard your parents are out of the house. You want to let me go to your room and have sex with this chick? Sure, why not? <laughs> not in the, like, not in the guest room. It's just my room. Yeah, please don't do it in the guest rooms. <laughs> I want would, you... <laughs> that would be weird. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to do it right under my glowing checks cashed here neon sign that I have in my window. <laughs> That I sleep with. Yeah, that I sleep with. It's it's my nightlight. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so they are loud animals upstairs and they're just fucking away on Joel's bed. Mm -hmm. And Joel decides, uh, instead of kicking them out, to just leave the house because he's a homie. (laughs) He's like, I won't be a cock block. Come on, Barry, let's go cruise. Mm -hmm. Get it? No, I don't. (laughs) I don't know either. Um, so they leave and there's like a little gag where they get into his dad's Porsche and as they're coming down, they're reversing down of the driveway and the music, the synth music is blaring and then the car dies and the synth music comes to a dead stop. Mm -hmm. And like you hear like Joel trying to like start the engine again with like the key and then it comes back up and the music starts going again and then we get a cool montage of Barry and Joel hitting the town and there's, like, a, a scene where Barry doesn't realize that boffing and sex were the same thing. Which I have never heard. Yeah, if you've heard of the term boffing to mean sex, please let us know. Yeah. Email us. <laughs> <laughs> not, don't comment on YouTube. Yet. No, no, that's don't not, comment. That's easy. Yeah, email us <laughs> at the cru- cruising altitude podcast at gmail.com. I'll put a link in the description. Um, They do some street... Or they talk about doing some street racing Mm -hmm. Uh, then they do some backwards donuts in an empty parking lot and drive slowly past some girls they don't try to hit on them or anything they just sort of drive slowly past them no they're just creeps yeah (laughs) (laughs) Um, my note here says I don't like seeing Curtis Armstrong as a young man wearing cargo pants (laughs) so that was when Miles Curtis Armstrong this is like the next day uh, Joel is out breaking the leaves and miles has the newspaper and he's going through the classifieds oh, right, right, right. and he's reading all these like call girls and whatnot and like subs looking for doms and whatever <laughs> <laughs> and he's ugly, ugly, ugly. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, one of the advertisements <laughs> in there is ugly, ugly, ugly. I actually paused when I first watched it to read it, and it's like something along the lines of, you don't want a good-looking chick? Fine, come here and fuck this ugly bag. <laughs> <laughs> Paraphrasing. Um, but anyway, Miles tries to talk Joel into getting a call girl, and Joel's like, no, I'm not going to do that. Why would I do that? Mm -hmm. So the good friend that Miles is... He goes and calls up a call girl named Jackie, gives her Joel's name and address, and then when Joel gets reasonably pissed mm -hmm. and demands to have the phone number, um, Miles rips it out of the newspaper and eats it. With some ketchup. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you're not going to eat newspaper paper without ketchup. <laughs> I bet you eat your steaks with ketchup, too. No. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't eat my steaks with ketchup. I eat my brochures with ketchup. Mm, Please. Oh, true. I like my brochures medium done. <laughs> you eat eggs with ketchup? No. I've tried it. It's it's not bad. I have before. I didn't think it was that bad, but eh, it's, not on mm, like the regular. Not into it. Apparently, like, Japanese people do that a lot. Which, like, I think, I guess... Why? I don't know. <laughs> Um, maybe they, maybe it's because they think like Americans do it. Because <laughs> like apparently they also eat like turkey and stuff on. Oh no, they, they eat, eat chicken K KFC. because they don't have any turkeys. Yeah, in Japan, KFC for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the Colonel Sanders yeah, yeah. dressed as Santa? <laughs> um, do you, I wonder if you like if they have a Santa at the KFCs there and then you get like to talk to him and ask him for chicken. <laughs> it's like the mall Santas here in America. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Um, where were we? Oh yeah. So miles, do you want to tell them about miles and how terrible he is? Yeah. So like there's a pattern in these movies that I've noticed that there's always one just like piece of human trash. <laughs> In these movies, that just, like, causes trouble for the main character. Which, to be fair, in uh, Endless Love, it was... It was Tom it, Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he just suggested it. But, like, in that movie, I was going to say the difference is, like, the main character is the human trash. Oh. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in this one, it kind of is Miles, because he kind of just, like... Yeah. In Endless Love, it was... David. David. In Taps, it was Tom Cruise. Yeah. It, I think his name is William or something like that. Um, Wallace. That's what it was. Uh, I, what? That one show, Wallace and... Wallace and Gromit? Yeah. Jeez, Gromit! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the audience can't see this, but I did the little handshake Wallace does whenever he gets excited about cheese. Um, and... The Outsiders? At Outsiders, it was Dallas. Yeah. In Losing It... It was Jackie Earl Haley's character. Mm -hmm. um, fuck, I, I barely forget. remember that movie. <laughs> it was so bad. We just want to forget. <laughs> that was the worst, though. That was, like, just, like, not worth living. He does not deserve it. Yeah, he was, no, he was... I am, like, just... I dare to call him a human being. <laughs> I'm trying to remember the word I used last time. Just, like, a... Uh, it's kind of like plague. <laughs> uh, I'll remember it later It's on. a walking disease. <laughs> um, oh, so anyway, uh, Miles leaves after he eats the newspaper with ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> and Joel's like, what the fuck? Why do I hang out with him? And then we get like a little montage of Joel just doing stuff. And we get a hose that is, I don't know, you could say that's a phallic object. A hose. Yeah. It's slowly moving from one end of the camera shot to the other side where there's a pot of flowers. I wonder what kind of symbolism there yeah, is. Yeah, I don't know. Are you familiar with the term deflowering? Mm, can't say I am. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, as the hose gets right towards the pot of flowers, it literally squirts. <laughs> Uh, we're looking at my dog because I thought you were running over his ear. <laughs> oh, oh my god. It does look like it. Yeah, he lives on the edge. He is dangerous. What are you doing, doggo? Oh, now he's stretching. 
trying to take a nap here. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's a good thing he's deaf or else he'd be like telling us to shut up. Um, let's see. So later that night, Joel does some other stuff. He has another frozen dinner and he gets drunk. No, Is this he was doing he homework. Oh. Is it? No, wait, hold on. <laughs> Is that later? Yeah, that's later. <laughs> bad. Um, <clears throat> so he's like doing homework or something when all of a sudden a pair of headlights flashes into oh, his yeah. like the front of his house and (laughs) Joel is horrified (laughs) (laughs) Um, and Jackie a call girl goes to his door and Joel like panics and goes to meet her Mm -hmm. to find out it's a transvestite is that the proper word yeah it's uh, Wikipedia according at least Um, transvestite is when someone of a certain gender dresses and acts like the opposite gender. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Jackie, played by Bruce A. Young. You familiar with him? Mm-mm. Have you seen Jurassic Park 3? Probably. <laughs> so, in Jurassic Park 3, there's a black guy who's like this mercenary named Nash. Oh. And he's like this big, burly, like, badass black dude who, mm-hmm. um, he's the pilot of the plane. Uh, he gets killed by the Spinosaurus. Oh. But, yeah. This is like... Is, is he the first to die in that movie? No, he's the second. Oh, okay. Which is... Cutting it close. I know. <laughs> you the black guy not dying first in the movie? <laughs> anyway. Um, those... Like, the plots to those movies are just such a blur. I don't know which one is which. <laughs> I just remember, like, uh, that one scene where... It's like that one type of uh, computer software, and she's like, "Oh, I know it's this. a Unix system. There I know this." Yeah, yeah, that's the first one. And then the Jello, and that, that's it. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's all you know about Jurassic Park. Yeah. Unix and Jello. <laughs> Wait, there are dinosaurs in those movies? <laughs> um, uh, Joel panics, mm-hmm. and he uh, goes to call Miles, and Miles is like, "No, Joel, we're playing cards." <laughs> And then he hangs up because he's a fucking asshole. Yeah. Um. What do they do then? Oh yeah, Joel goes back to the door and he like tries to apologize, and mm-hmm. Jackie's like, "Just let me in so I can call a goddamn cab and go home, please." Yeah. Should have realized that you white boys from the lake <laughs> aren't suited for a woman like me. Mm-hmm. She says something like that. I bet that would have worked a lot better if the title was "White Boys from the Lake." Oh, because then yeah. you would have been like, ha, they said the title. Mm-hmm. Like that scene from Family Guy. Do they say risky business in the, in the movie? <laughs> when Lana's propositioning him to ter- open a brothel, he's like, I don't know. That sounds like some. Looks right at the camera, too. <laughs> that sounds like some <laughs> dangerous <laughs> business management. Damn. Um. So, Jackie gets $75 for cab fare, which, if this happened in 2019, would have been $191. Oh, you converted it? Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, Jackie must live far away. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. She lives somewhere in the... I, we can assume that she lives somewhere in the city, mm-hmm. like Lana. Um... Jackie is a fucking homie because she gives Joel the number for this other call girl named Lana who, and I quote, every white boy off the lake wants. And has had. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And this is where Joel jerks it. Oh, right. And he thinks about a police raid? Uh Uh-huh. And then that. You want to explain to them his fantasy? So, like, while he's under, the, like, the scorching heat of those, uh... <laughs> of his neon <laughs> checks cashed here sign. Uh-huh. He, like, reaches down and starts thinking about that babysitter he hasn't met yet, and... I think he's me- met her, because they... Oh, I guess he... I'm pretty sure it's a real person, but, like, she goes to their school. Oh. So he's a creep, then. Who the fuck... Yeah, he's a creep, <laughs> but who the fuck cares, because she never shows up again. Yeah. So he, like, imagines that... I guess he's in their house, and then they start, like, Getting, doing... Going good. to Pound Town. I was going to say doing risky business. <laughs> oh, that's much better. In the kitchen. Wait, say it again. I'll edit it in. <laughs> so, um, Joel imagines that he's with the babysitter in the kitchen, and they're about to do some risky business, 
when for some reason <laughs> police <laughs> police and I think military just surround the house and mm-hmm. warn Joel to come out and put his pa- pants back on. Get off the babysitter. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and just come on out. And then his parents appear mm-hmm. and they take the megaphone from the police chief and they're like, Joel, don't throw your life away like this. And then the dad shows up. Yeah, then the babysitter's dad <laughs> shows up, who is just some random dude who runs out of the crowd. And he's like, I won't end you, you son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. And Joel's like, I don't even know that guy. <laughs> and the babysitter tells him it's his dad or it's her dad. Mm-hmm. Now, my main question is, was he still jerking it while he was thinking about the police raid and her dad? <laughs> I say yes. Me too. He's like, I'll get through this. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the weirdest thing I've done. <laughs> like those guys that comment on not the not my proudest fat. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Sigh unzips. <laughs> um So Joel uh he gets out of bed and he reads and marks the classifieds, I guess all night, mm-hmm. or at least into the night, until he decides to go downstairs and get a drink. And um he does look younger than he did in Taps, which was two years prior. Oh, wait, wait. So this movie was two years before yeah, Taps? No, Taps was in 81. This was 83. I guess that weird... That weird workout. training regimen that they had him do of working out for one week and then eating fatty foods <laughs> <laughs> really paid off. Yeah, because he looked like he was on steroids compared to this. <laughs> um... So Joel, oh no, that's right. He goes up, he goes to his room and (laughs) he sits in his underwear and he puts on a baseball catcher's mask and calls Lana. I can't believe I forgot about that. (laughs) So he's sitting in his dark bedroom. The only light is that checks cashed here sign, (laughs) (laughs) which why does he have? Who the fuck knows? Um... He has it up in his window. I, I don't like that we never saw it from the outside. Yeah, because we can read it. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, so it's... What? <laughs> so, like, if you're outside, it's it backwards. Yeah. I guess, it, I guess it's like, he, that way he won't confuse people. That like, oh, what, what a weird place for a check, check store. I guess so. Um, but he's sitting in his underwear, and he calls up Lana, and... Over the phone, she has a very sultry voice, and, and I was about to say David, but that's not right. Joel's like, man, this is what I'm talking about, <laughs> and he gives her a fake name and his address, and then he slowly puts a catcher's mask over his face. That way he feels safe. Yeah, I guess so, because... And he has floaties yeah. on, too. Yeah, you I don't guess have to the, watch the movie. Yeah, don't watch the, the, the movie, because we're going to just tell you everything. <laughs> but he has a baseball, baseball, a baseball mask swim floaties weird thing is only one arm's inflated (laughs) i guess he was doing the first one and he decided to call halfway (laughs) but um then he goes downstairs has a drink falls asleep drunk and then lana shows up Mm -hmm. and i guess he left his door unlocked from when jackie was there and left because she just comes right on in (laughs) And some sweet synth music starts playing by a Tangerine Dream. And, um, yeah. You wanna, and, then they, and then they do You want to continue? Yeah. Then Lana so, comes in and she's like, are you ready for me or something? And, and then he says, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> well, okay, but my curfew's at 930, so. <laughs> you better hurry. <laughs> it's already 915. <laughs> Okay, that's enough time. Yeah, <laughs> especially for a teenage boy. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Oh, boy. The the scene, Lana just stands there and waits for Joel to come over to her while synth music blares. And... Oh, it's he, like, so weird. He, um... Was it... Was that patio door closed and it just like yeah, opens it was closed. by itself because mm-hmm. the wind is apparently so strong that it just like bursts the uh-huh. door and then leaves go in. Yeah, so uh, Lana's standing there in her like purple dress thing mm-hmm. and Joel comes over and he starts like weirdly feeling her up and fondling her and he like lifts the 
dress up to reveal that she is completely naked underneath. Yeah, she was ready. Yeah, she's a prostitute. A call girl, sorry. <laughs> um, but it the scene does not cut. No. You think it would just, like, cut from him lifting her skirt up to, like, them boning or something? No, it keeps going. It keeps going. Mm-hmm. She gets basically naked while they're making out... <laughs> and the fucking door blows open, and a stream of endless leaves flies in. <laughs> I thought you were going to say endless love. <laughs> There's no love in this movie. <laughs> um, I thought it was a dream, and that it wasn't real, and it was just happening in his mind because he yeah. fell asleep drunk on the couch. It feels like the first part of like dream sequences in Freddy Krueger movies, before it reveals that <laughs> it you're does. actually about to die. <laughs> like Freddy comes through the door? Yeah. Uh, it wasn't a dream. That hot model blonde who had sex with him all night is not a dream. Mm-hmm. No, there's actually like a lack of male nudity that the others didn't have. That's true. Yeah. This, yeah, it's it's all why. just Lana. Yeah, uh, like... yeah. I think she is the only like person who gets fully naked in this movie. Mm-hmm. Other than that babysitter. Yeah, and the other dream woman. Mm-hmm. Why is there no... This is the first movie with no man-ass, because I would have made a note about it. (laughs) Um, But yeah, we get to see Lana and Joel have sex on the stairs, and then it pans over to a photo of Joel as a little boy and a baby. Yeah, that was was weird. Um, Most to show how people grow up. Uh That's all. And get get call girls. Uh, Then they have sex in front of the TV, which has the American flag on it because it's late at night. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I have right here, this is going to be a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> and it was. Yeah, it was. And it's $300 worth of money. Did you convert that? No. <laughs> I imagine... Let's say about uh, $800. Yeah. Damn. She ain't cheap. No. Well, I mean, she <laughs> is the best, as her pimp later says. Guido. Um, let's see. If, if she's the best, would she have more diseases or less... I'm gonna say less, because she, she can afford. More. Yeah, she can. Yeah, <laughs> she can afford. To go to <laughs> she, <hospital>. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she can afford birth control and getting tested. She has a little punch card. It's like this time it's free. <laughs> 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 Walks out of the hospital with a big gold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, uh, where are we? Oh yeah, so John, Jonna, <laughs> Jonna and Lowell. <laughs> Joel finds Lana on the back porch, and she has changed clothes, and she's sitting smoking. She's prepared prepared herself some breakfast, and she tells him it's gonna be three hundred bucks. And Joel's like, "I don't have that kind of cash." <laughs> mm-hmm. And where does he go, Saul? To the bank, I think. Which is, as we have deduced, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Joel hops on down to the little old man that they keep trapped in his basement in the basement bank mm-hmm. uh, to get a bond, a savings bond, which reads, Dearest Joel, may your life be filled with happiness and joy. We love you. Grandma and Grandpa Zoo Dune. <laughs> oh, I didn't catch that. <laughs> I misspelled. I, I, it, the, note sa- the note looks like it says Zoo Dune. Mm-hmm. But it's really good. <laughs> oh. They so. were very old at the time. <laughs> they could barely write Their anymore. Name. <laughs> <laughs> From Grandma and Grandpa Zudun. <laughs> um, the bank teller's like, is that right? <laughs> I just go with it. I don't care anymore. Okay. Hey, the name on the check's right, so who cares? <laughs> But, um, yeah, then Joel comes back upstairs from his basement bank man that they keep trapped down there. Um, that's also why he has so many frozen dinners throughout this film. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's because those were the supplies he was supposed to give to the bank man when his parents were gone. Mm -hmm. It's like their dog. (laughs) I just realized, Lana had different clothes on, but she didn't arrive with, like... She had a a purse. There was a whole set of clothes in there. I guess. Instead of her, you know, drugs. Well, there's gonna be both. (laughs) But yeah, I noticed that the first time, but the second time I watched it, I was like, oh, I guess she did bring a purse, so I or assume that's where she maybe got it. she's taking, like, the mom's clothes 
May <laughs> already? Yeah. Maybe she snuck and next Joel door to like the clothesline from <laughs> someone next door and stole them. Joel's like, wow, that's really hot. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird, because we're reading a story in my history class about this guy named Oedipus. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did Were you there when we... Uh, that weird food Oedipus yeah. video? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was... So, some of those parts were like, really <laughs> awkward. If you haven't seen it, what are, they, what are they... What are they? Like chicken wings or something? Weren't they eggs? Oh, are they eggs? No, no, no. Uh, wait. Because the sheep were like... Oh, that's right. There's this, like, video on YouTube of a retelling of the story of Oedipus, mm -hmm. except all the characters are food. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Veggie Tales, but adult. Maybe they were potatoes? Oh, I think they were potatoes. Yeah, I think Oedipus was a potato. <laughs> he should have realized when the mom was a potato. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you should have known, because she wasn't another food. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> That potato's got curves. <laughs> Want to mash that? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh, moving on. Oh no, I lost my place. Oh no, here we go. Um, so Joel comes home with the money to find that his mother's precious Fabergé glass egg is missing. Her egg has been stolen. Turns out her name is Daenerys. Boo. Are you watching the new Game of Thrones series? I haven't seen a single episode. I have only seen the first season, and I stopped watching after that because I just didn't care. Um, if you're excited about Game of Thrones, don't let us know. <laughs> I would watch it, but I, but I found out that... Uh, oh, man. what's? Uh, I feel bad now for not remembering his name. I have bad memory. Uh, Aquaman. Jason Momoa. Yeah. That his character dies. I'm like, oh, yeah. Uh, he dies in the first season. Yeah, so I'm like, what's the point then? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just go and rewatch Aquaman again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he finds that the Fabergé egg is missing, and he freaks out. So he enlists his good buddy, Miles, mm -hmm. to help him out because he got him into the trouble. Exactly. Um, Joel calls Jackie, who is still a homie. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to see more video, or more like scenes of them hanging yeah. out. <laughs> that would have been nice. Or like the movie ends with like him, like dissing Lana and going to a bar with Jackie or something. Making him like the business. Uh, what's the what would be the word? Uh, Manager. Yeah. Pimp. <laughs> Pimp is such an unsophisticated term. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, I don't know if you heard this or not, but Joel recognizes Lana by her legs. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they track Lana down to a hotel, and they're waiting in the lobby, and they see her come out of somewhere, and as you said earlier, <laughs> you were hoping that she would have the, the Fabergé egg with her <laughs> in a tiny little suit. <laughs> yeah. In like... One of those baby carriers, <laughs> oh, yeah, like, like in the front of you. <laughs> <sex>. <laughs> uh. And um, as she's talking to, I assume her client, because it didn't look like her pimp. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, manager. She spots Joel immediately, and he like awkwardly waves. She's like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, like, "Oh great, this kid." Uh, Joel does nothing, and as they leave the hotel, it seems like it's a lot later at night when they leave. Mm, yeah. We didn't really see what time it was when they got there, though, so no. I don't know. Who the fuck knows? Um, they waited until she was done. <laughs> you know, she doesn't... She does not mind age, ga age gaps at all. No. Well, I'm she's, assuming she's, she's about like, 10 years older than him, assuming he's also he's 18 and she's the age of the actress, 28. Not too bad. that dude looks 58. Who? <laughs> the uh, one she was with? Yeah. Or the pimp? Yeah. Um... Yeah, so Joel does nothing, and then Lana meets them outside the hotel and asks to talk inside Joel's car. Where's my egg? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the best parts about this movie is hearing Tom Cruise repeatedly ask, <laughs> Can I have my egg back? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Lana and Joel get in the car, 
And then later it cuts to Miles being in the back of the car. And I like to imagine that they made Lana get out so they can push the passenger seat forward so Miles could climb back in. And then she had to get back in the car. Mm-hmm. Um, what are they talking about? This is mostly about the egg. Yeah, the egg, how he wants it back. Yeah, and then she's like, you know, I don't have, I kind of can't really deal with that. I'm kind of dealing with my own shit right now. So I uh, kind of lay off. Yeah, can we just get moving, can please? We go to Wendy's? <laughs> Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen, right. Um, and then Lana's manager chases out and tries to get her out of the car, and he pulls a gun on her in the, in the public. Mm-hmm. I guess nobody cares since it's he Chicago. he runs a yeah it's Chicago in the eighties, <laughs> and he runs a prostitution ring out of this hotel. They know him well, yeah. So if they say anything, they won't get clients. Yeah. Um, they drive away, and the manager chases them down, and Lana then screams at him out of the window. I have right here, this movie's awesome. I don't remember why. I think because of the music. Were you drunk when you watched this? No. <laughs> Were you? Was I? <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then Miles yells out his best line of the film, which is, as they're in a car chase, I've got a trig test tomorrow and I'm being chased by a... And Wait, let me try that again. I've got a trig test tomorrow, and I'm being chased by a Guido, the killer pimp. <laughs> that was like, the first part wasn't even the car chase. It was like him following. Yeah, him. oh, that's right. They well, f- Joel drives the speed <laughs> limit. <laughs> yeah, you think if you're getting followed and you know you're being followed, I don't know, go fast, get a cop's attention, go to the police station. Yeah something instead he just sort of drives around chicago for a little yeah, like a half like, hour as if when you try to play like a citizen in gta <laughs> just like uh, actually stop <laughs> and stuff um <clears throat> let's see oh so they stop at a stoplight and i was expecting joel's car to shit out on him because it's happened at least once i think before in the film yeah when he was like pulling out of the driveway yeah. and then does it happen again before the chase? I want to say it happens, like, at the garage? When he's, like... When he gets it back? Oh, that's right. I want to say it happened there, too. But needless to say, the car... It'll it'll shit out on you. But it <laughs> luckily does not shit out on Joel when he takes off and gets in a car chase that goes around the block. And he's baby <laughs> driving this bitch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you want to explain how they get away from Guido? So they like, first he's like driving circles around the same alleyway just over and over and then instead of going the usual left turn he makes a right turn and apparently that's like rocket science to Guido because yeah. he makes another left <laughs> and that's when he loses him. <laughs> yeah Guido he sort of falls behind mm-hmm. so he just assumes they keep going left <laughs> and then he assumes that they're still going left for the next half hour <laughs> um one of the most boring and probably most lifelike chase scenes, question mark? Lifelike? I mean, what are you going to do in a real chase scene? It's going to be pretty quiet. Uh, it's not going to be crazy like in an action movie oh, or like, like Fast and music, Furious. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah, you're not doing crazy stunts. Like all he did was just drive around the block and go into an alley. Mm-hmm. So, I mean. Oh, yeah. I, that makes sense. Um, let me see. Could have used the car explosion, though. That would have been cool. Yeah, that would have been cool. That would have been way cooler. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so they, I guess they drop off Miles at his house, and then Lana and Joel go home, and they fuck. And then in the morning, Lana makes him some breakfast, and he gets a call from his parents. And, um, let's see. Yeah, so Lana serves him breakfast wearing only a sweatshirt, she also looks like the comic book character Magic, only because she's blonde and has bangs. <laughs> yeah. Um, she but, she uses like sword and stuff, right? Yeah, she's um Colossus's little sister mm-hmm. who is like trapped in hell, and uh, then when she comes out, she has a cool metal arm. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So she has. She, I'm not, I can't think of what her actual mutant power is. Some are weird, because, like, some are straight up magic. Yeah, it's, <laughs> like, um. But she can do magic, but she has an actual, let me look it up. She, she, has, she has an actual X, uh, what's it called? X 
factor. <laughs> what, the TV just... show? Oh, maybe I'm just thinking about, like, Marvel vs. Capcom. Because that's what they call it there. Oh, the mutant power? Yeah. Well, in the comic, it's the X-Gene. Right. Don't mind me, I'm currently on MarvelFandom.com. Oh, looking... She has a demon form. That's cool. Yeah. She's also part of the uh, New Mutants, which is going to be the last Fox X-Men movie. Is that that uh, horror one? Mm-hmm. That's huh. been pushed back, like, almost two years. Yeah. Um, she has the power of stepping discs, which allow her and others to teleport across interstellar distances or through time. The discs are part of the dimension known as Limbo. Hmm. Also, she knows sorcery. So her... Is that her mutant power? Is that she can teleport Straight anywhere? magic. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, also has mystical, mystical armor and psionic shield. Oh, look. Her ability is multilingual. Oh, good. <laughs> she knows Russian, and she's also telepathically fluent in English. Hmm. Let's see. Her strength level is of a normal female with moderate regular exercise. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird, I guess. I guess that is her... Yeah, she can just teleport. She's like Nightcrawler, but better, I guess. Mm -hmm. Less hot. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway... Uh, what did they talk about the next morning? Aside, oh, Joel's like, I want my egg back. Get yeah. out of my house. You whore. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, didn't you have a fun time last night, Joel? And he's like, oh, yeah, I did. And he completely forgets what he was talking about. And then he... But then he's like, wait, are you not, are you going to charge me extra for that? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and she gets offended. <laughs> it's like, what are you taking for? Some kind of whore? <laughs> I'm a call girl, damn it. <laughs> um... Let's see. Uh, then Miles and I think who's it? Glenn maybe. They anyway. His fr Joel's friends roll up outside because they carpool to school, mm -hmm. and Joel runs out and like she's still here. I can't get her to leave. Just go without me. Um. So they go without him. Weird that they carpool when they're rich. That's true. What if they all have their own like drivers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, cars, I guess. Um. Let's see. I just want my egg back, Tom Cruise, circa 1983. <laughs> I wonder if, like, if you tweeted that at him, would he remember? Like, what movie that's from? We gotta do that. <laughs> what, just tweet him the quote, I just want my egg back? Yeah, not even the date, because then that would be obvious. Yeah. It just, like, all comes rushing back to him. Oh, my God. <laughs> all those Bible then studies. Then for a sequel. <laughs> oh, please. Risky business, too. Riskier business. <laughs> Back in the riskness. Oh, no. <laughs> um, Joel then asks her to please not steal anything while he goes to school and then takes off. Uh, he has a pop quiz in his first class, and meanwhile at home, Lana immediately starts looking for shit to steal, mm -hmm. and then she steals his car and takes it to the train station, but I guess decides not to leave. Yeah, that was weird, because I thought she was just going to, like, book it yeah. there, and then she wouldn't show up again, but she went back? I guess. I guess I... she just wanted to ride the train. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe? Uh, it didn't look like like a, a city maybe, train. It looked like an out-of-state train. Or maybe that hobo was staring at her for a reason. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I don't like that. Um, please, like that hobo could afford her. <laughs> yeah. Um... Maybe that's why, that's why he's uh, homeless because he just spends all oh his my money. God. On her. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, but she decides not to leave for some reason. We do really don't find out why. Is it because we also don't find out when she like? Spoiler alert: when she starts siding with Guido and like yeah. works with them. Like, was it? I don't. Maybe I'd like to think it was like in the lobby, and she told him about. Joel, and then they devise the plan then. But who the fuck knows? We're never given an explanation. I always thought, like, the whole time she was just in on it. Oh, really? Hmm. Maybe. Who knows? We'll have to ask Can't Tom. trust those call girls. Exactly. <laughs> Except for uh, Jackie. <laughs> She's cool. Yeah. She's a homie. Um, so Glenn finally gets... Or Glenn. Um, wait. Joel finally gets home. 
and finds Glenn leaving his house without his shirt on. Mm -hmm. And he's like, did you have sex with Lana? So help me God, Glenn. I'll make that gap in between your two front teeth even bigger. (laughs) But he's like, no, I didn't have sex with Lana. But I did have sex with Vicky. (laughs) And Joel turns around and discovers there is another call girl in his house. Uh, Another blonde woman named Vicky. Uh, she tries to give Joel some money to be a pimp, but Joel is like, no, I am not a pimp. Get out of my house. Give me my egg. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with you and the eggs? <laughs> um, th- so then he kicks them out, and coincidentally enough, a few minutes after they leave, who's to show up on their front yard? But Guido, the murderous pimp. <laughs> And he's like, you'll get back in my car, you whores, and you're coming with me. And they're screaming and making a ruckus out in the front yard. And then Joel comes out, and uh, Lana and Vicky run back inside. And (laughs) Tom confronts Guido in his sandals and jean short shorts. Mm -hmm. It's a cute outfit. Yeah, well, I mean, he was working out. What else is he going to (laughs) wear? Anything else? (laughs) (laughs) Or nothing else. That's true. But then we would have had man ass. Can't have that. No. Especially not in 1983. Bastards. I know, right? It's a tradition! (laughs) Maybe the next one will. I hope so. It seems like it will, because I think it's another high school movie. And Tom Cruise wears a varsity jacket. So hopefully it's legal. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. Um... Let's see, Guido tries to get into the house as Lana and Vicky, like, berate him from the window as three kids watch. Where's his gun in this scene? I feel like that would have made things easier. Well, he had his belt. It's like, well, either you let me in or I shoot you. (laughs) He forgot it at home. (laughs) Maybe this, I, maybe when Vicky shows up is when the plan, like, starts enacting. Yeah, I can see that. Because, like, why else would Guido... Show no. up there, yeah. yeah. Oh, now you're you're onto something. Yeah, we're sleuths. <laughs> um, what do they? What does Guido do? Uh, is he just like you I better? Think he just like threatens him. Yeah, he, th- he thinks that Joel is the new pimp, mm-hmm. even though he's like a high schooler, <laughs> <laughs> never too young to start pimping. That's what my great grandfather always said. Guido started when he was twelve. Yeah. <laughs> A full chest of hair. <laughs> um, my dog is chewing his foot, if you can hear that. Anyway, Guido leaves and threatens Joel, and he's like, you better get them to come back to me, so help me God, I'll break your legs. Um, but then later, Joel makes the two call girls a lovely uh, TV dinners, which I assume they had to tell him how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Then Lana interrupts Joel later that night during his homework for the free enterprise thing, I think. Or just other homework in general. And, um... Do you think those, uh, (laughs) TV dinners were, um... What's it called? When they put, like, products in the movie? Oh, product placement? There you go. No. Uh, Because there were no labels or anything. Oh, no, that's The closest thing to product placement was, like, the Dairy Queen... Yeah. But even then, most of those labels were obscured, probably yeah. because they didn't want to have to pay Dairy Queen. <laughs> yeah, because usually they like have it front and center for mm-hmm. a few seconds, and then yeah. they start eating it. <laughs> um, Boy, I love my Dairy Queen, don't you? I, too, love Dairy Queen, Saul. How... Let's casually talk about Dairy Queen for the next <laughs> 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, she talks Joel into... Wait, what? Joel is going to... Hmm. Oh. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what I had written here, but it says, Joel is going to free Enterprise a pimp hold. I thought that's what... I thought that's that was the direction. Yeah, was like going. he was going to be into it? Yeah. Uh, then Lana asks if he wants to get high and go get some ice cream with her and Vicky. Later. <laughs> what were you going to say? I was going to say, who doesn't? <laughs> True. Uh, later that night, Joel is as high as a kite... And he's with Barry, Vicky, and Lana, and they're at, I guess, the lake side of Lake Michigan. Mm-hmm. And they're just sort of walking around, and then Barry's like, don't worry, I'm here for you. All right, I'm going to go take a walk with Vicky, bye. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's left alone with Lana. 
notice how she does not appear to be high. That's true. Well, he's, like, stoned out of his mind. Also, she may just have a higher tolerance. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure that was his first time getting high. <laughs> Not true. Or maybe she faked it. Mm. Hers was a fake joint. <laughs> <laughs> it was oregano. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, you smell spaghetti. That's <laughs> <laughs> ah, just the smell of the lake. <laughs> um... Lana and Joel, I made this a note of when they're walking and talking down the little shitty dock at the lake. Lana and Joel wear opposing shirts. Lana wears a red varsity jacket with white sleeves, while Joel wears a gray shirt with red sleeves. Mm. Symbolism? Probably yes. <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, Joel, quote-unquote, wears his heart on his sleeve. And uh, in contrast to Lana's closed-off... Uh, nature and how she uses Joel's naivete. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can buy it. Hey, look, I took a film class, okay? <laughs> um, Lana proposes a business deal while Joel is high and promises to be his girlfriend for the next couple days. Free of charge. A whole week, wow. <laughs> yeah. No, she doesn't say a whole week. She says the next couple of days, mm. which could be one, it could be two. She's like, I'll take you to prom. <laughs> like, you, you look, not to, not to offend you, but you, you look a little old for prom, don't you think? <laughs> She's like, fine, it'll cost you to be, for me to be your girlfriend. <laughs> um, do you want to ask what Joel asks her? Or do you want to say what Joel asks her? Um, damn, what does he ask her? He asks about her family. Oh, right. And she's like, my dad, used, my stepdad used to come <laughs> on to me, so I left home. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And then she goes into Joel's Porsche, gets her, like, purse, and fucks with the gear stick. Gear, Puts gear it on stick. Neutral, I yeah, think. I assume so. And as she leaves, the Porsche starts rolling down the hill towards the coincidentally placed dock at the lake. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the doors are locked and the keys are inside. <laughs> And uh, Joel tries his damnedest to stop this multi-ton car from rolling down the hill. Mm -hmm. But it stops just shy of falling off the dock. If he had been as strong as he was during taps, maybe he could have stopped it. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Too bad. Um, let's see. Then the car just falls into the lake along with Joel. Mm -hmm. Tom Cruise, I should mention, does his own stunts. Mm -hmm. That was real water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, then Barry and Vicky find him, or like they run to the dock and call to Joel and fade to black. Um, cut to the dealership where they unload the fish infested car. Even though the windows. Yeah, were I don't know how those up. fish got in there. The muffler, maybe? That's what I was going to say <laughs> that. <laughs> um, let's see. See, that's why I think that um, Lana was like in on it at this point because. She put the fish inside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because she she's the one that like changed the gears on the car, made mm -hmm. it roll down. But that's just a theory. Here at Game Theories. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. So Joel gets late to school where I guess you have to go to the nurse to get a late pass. Mm -hmm. Um and he tries to explain to her the situation. She, she's like, fuck off, kid. I don't want to deal with your bullshit. You know how much bullshit I have to deal with on a daily basis? Yeah, he was like... <laughs> he, like, grabbed her by the collar, and he's like, I've had to deal with this shit for four years, as if she probably hasn't had to deal with it for much, much longer, with yeah. her soulless eyes just gazing at him. After she declines to help him out and be a homie twice, yeah, Joel <laughs> grabs her collar and pulls her forward, and, uh... That lands him a suspension of five days and getting kicked out of his junior entrepreneurs club uh -huh. for threatening the nurse. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to try to, like, uh, what's the word, seduce her into helping him. <laughs> Learn some tricks from Lana. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Be a gigolo. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. So later that night, after he gets out of school, I assume he was, like, in detention or something, probably had to clean the chalk mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, he rides down, he rides a bike 
somewhere, we don't know where, but he is speeding down the streets so fast that a fat man walking by with an ice cream cone looks on in amazement. <laughs> <laughs> then he has a panic attack at a train station. Did you notice that he gets a ride from a cop to the hotel where Lana is? Really? Yeah. Huh. I didn't notice that. I don't know how he did that. <laughs> Help, someone's chasing me. <laughs> I need to get to this hotel where a prostitution ring is set out of. Then he runs up many flights of stairs and finds Lana. I thought he was going to go to Guido and be like, you need to get rid of Lana and Vicky. They are ruining my life. Nope. He goes to her. That would make too much sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because sadly enough, the only person Joel has to go to is a call girl. Mm -hmm. And he uh, meets her in the apartment room and he hugs her and just cries into her shoulder. And, and then she's like, all oh, yeah. according to plan. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Jesus, I wasn't expecting this. This is sad. I almost feel bad now. Yeah. Almost. Almost. <laughs> uh, the next day, Lana, like, taunts the Fabergé egg in front of Joel by putting it in an open windowsill while they come up with a plan to... could have um, easily fallen over. Mm-hmm. Like, Joel, like, he could have bumped it with his elbow or, or the wind. You've seen how much the wind <laughs> gets oh, yeah. in Chicago. <laughs> it's called the Windy City for a reason. Oh, that's true. <laughs> it's a good thing there weren't leaves outside that window. <laughs> um, and then Lana devises a plan for Joel to run a brothel out of his house for one night to get enough money to pay for the repairs to his Porsche and get the egg back. But Joel didn't... Uh, I guess he forgot about a very important thing he was supposed to do that same night. Oh, what? Uh, his uh, Princeton University... Uh, was it like a interview? Yep. <laughs> yeah, so um, before the Princeton recruiter shows up, uh, Barry and all of Joel's buddies are at the house because they've set up an operation. Barry takes care of the money. Um, an endless line of women just comes to his house. And then later, Joel's rich trust fund schoolmate buddies buy their services. Mm -hmm. Barry is the treasurer, Lana is the production, and Joel is the sales. <laughs> and uh, I want to see an office-style doco about the life of them pimping. <laughs> like you, would you watch a mockumentary about, like, in the style of, like, The Office or Parks and Rec, but it's about <laughs> call girls and pimps? Yeah, I yeah. would. We should make that. Oh, we should go to Tom Cruise, ask him to back us when we go to a television network. We can go to Netflix. Netflix, if you're listening, and I know you are, the entity that is Netflix, we got a great idea. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Joel is wearing shades at night, so you know he's turned to the dark side. Because <laughs> when he puts on those shades, he becomes Joel, mm -hmm. pimp, <laughs> uh, entrepreneur. Thank you. That's right, manager. Uh, let's see. Joel, blah blah blah. He makes the argument that call girls are way better than trying to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's true. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to my girlfriend. I did not mean that. That was a joke. I even made a note right here to make sure to apologize in event of jokes. Um, then Joel, did you catch this when he's at the gas station trying to sell to some guy that he dreams of multi-state operations? Oh, yeah. Because he's like, oh, you're going to a college out of state. It's a big campus. <laughs> um, la then later that night, Joel's house is turned into a nonstop 24-7 fuck house of high-class degenerates and sex fiends. Yeah. Yeah. That, that sums it up pretty well. The streets are backing up, and for some reason the <laughs> police don't care. <laughs> or the neighbors. I thought that was going to get busted. Yeah. But it did not. Oh, hey, Turk, what are you doing? Or maybe they paid off the cops. Oh, maybe. Maybe the cops were there. Um, it's the mecca of oh. fucking. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Turk don't want no more pets. <laughs> um, 
there are literally mattresses being unloaded <laughs> because there aren't enough in the house. Then a mustachioed man shows up to the brothel, and it's the recruiter from Princeton. Mm-hmm. Um, Joel has a meeting in a back room, and I could not believe that the guy was still going through with it. Yeah. <laughs> like, he just kept going. He was acting like, oh, yeah, this is good. Uh, it looks here like you did all these things in high school, blah, blah, blah. He was doing his best to be professional about it. Oh, yeah. Even though he was judging him on the inside. Yeah, and checking out all the call girls. Mm-hmm. Because as we find out after the Princeton interview is done <laughs> later that night, that uh, he made a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. One of which he leaves the party with. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Let's see. But then the Princeton guy's like, sorry, Joel, I just, I don't know if you're the right material. (laughs) And Joel puts on his shades, I'm sorry, Joel, puts on his shades and says, sometimes you just gotta say, what the fuck, make your move. That may have been the cringiest part of (laughs) it. Yeah, you did not like that. No, just, uh. uh. Then he stands up and says, Looks like the University of Illinois. <laughs> um, then later, he, j- for some reason, sits downstairs in the basement and plays with that bank manager's model train set. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, Lana says that, she's like, what are you so mopey about? You're making all this money. You have a rockin' party. Uh, you got a girlfriend to boot. Which is actual, those are her words. She used the word to boot. To boot. Mm-hmm. Means also. <laughs> what if he's like, girlfriend? Boots! <laughs> <laughs> well, he is like girlfriend because, um. Let's see what happens. Like, before another call girl comes in and tells her that there's a call for Joel, he's like, Are you my girlfriend? Yes, no, maybe? And she oh, yeah. takes the phone. She's like, Yes, no. Maybe. And then as he's on the phone with his parents, uh, she asks him to go have sex on a train. I'm sorry, to go make love on a train. Mm -hmm. Completely different. Yeah. One is gross. The other is a subway train. (laughs) Um, Let's see. Also, while Joel is on the call with his parents, he zones out right as his mom tells him that when they're coming home. Yep. Uh, the night of sexual debauchery ceases. <laughs> Phil Collins plays as Joel and Lana make the love on a train. She grabs his ass. <laughs> she grabs his ass. Oh, no. Wait. Hold on. Let me do that again. Phil Collins plays as Joel and Lana embark on a subway train. It's the L train if you want to It's really get dirty looking train. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. Probably it is something. disgusting. <laughs> I would not even sit down on that train, let alone have sex. Mm-hmm. Sex. Sex. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's after five. I can have my stroke now. <laughs> um, she grabs his ass. They make out as this drunk homeless guy watches. We don't know if he was drunk. He could have just... Or we don't know if he was he homeless. He could have been drunk. Him. Yeah. And slowly but surely, people depart from the train. And at the final stop, Joel helps the drunk guy off at a station so he and Lana can fuck in a gross, dirty subway train. You can tell it's not the first time she's done that because she knew to wait. Well, I mean, duh. <laughs> she's not an exhibitionist. <laughs> um, there's no foreplay. They just go right at it like those rabbits from The Outsiders. <laughs> And then the camera cuts from, like, them fooling around a little bit to Lana riding Joel uh, to drain to trains passing, which I believe is a analog for sex, mm-hmm. followed by a train hissing to a halt, which I believe is an analog for coming. <laughs> In the movie, while they're having sex, it cuts away to just a montage of the train just, like, speeding by, speeding by, speeding by. Um, and then it shows the train f- uh, driving away on the rails, and then you hear a pss, mm-hmm. which is. <laughs> 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 um. So after their sex feel, he definitely has some sort of disease. Yeah, he should get himself checked out. Oh, definitely. 
Um, Joel gets out. Wait, what? Hold on. Oh, okay. So Joel finally gets his dad's car out of the garage and is almost immediately hit by a speeding truck. <laughs> Should mention that Tom Cruise does his own stunts. And when he gets home, he's happy as can be. He's whistling Phil Collins, coming in the air tonight. And you want to tell the audience what he finds? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> his entire house has been ransacked. Everything was stolen. It's like that episode of Fresh Prince. Oh, yeah. Uh, so Joel calls Lana, but she doesn't answer. But then Guido answers, and... <laughs> Joel's like, what the fuck? Give me my shit back. And then he gets hung up on and he redials Guido. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, I think the call disconnected or something. <laughs> Give me my shit back, you son of a... And then the call disconnects. And then... He's like, wait a minute. I think he's hanging up on me. <laughs> and Guido's like, this is getting boring, Joel. Mm -hmm. And Joel asks very politely if he can have his stuff back. So what does Joel have to do to get his stuff back? Uh... Does it, like, cut away right to yeah. where he's buying it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Guido holds an impromptu auction of only Joel, where he <laughs> has to buy back his entire house. Um, How did he even afford that? Because he used that money from the uh, orgy. <laughs> Why'd you say it like that? Because <laughs> um, he used that money for his car, right? So, unless he had, like, way more than That's that. That's question. Maybe insurance? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, act of God clause. Oh, okay. Clawful, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Guido slowly but surely makes all 8,000 or whatever, however much left Joel has. Maybe he spent, like, I don't know, a few grand on the car and then the rest on getting the stuff back. Yeah. Because I feel like Guido was going to give him the shit back anyway. He, he just, just wanted to see how much he could take. <laughs> <laughs> also, he wanted the money. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so Guido is selling back Joel's stuff. And um, there's some other furniture in there where they were like, oh, this is the last thing. So I assume that Guido did this before. Yeah. But as it turns out, the Fabergé egg... Um, wait, wait, what? Okay, so... They throw the Fabergé egg out of the truck because they're terrible people. Yeah. And Joel has to run in slow motion and grab it and catch it out of the air. Mm -hmm. And he does so. He saves it. But as they're driving away, the entire back of the truck is empty. And the furniture is on the ground outside. Mm -hmm. So what I like to assume is when Vicky, the woman, throws the glass egg... She and Guido quickly kick all the other stuff out of the truck. <laughs> then Vicky <laughs> hops out, runs back around to the driver's seat, and Guido just sits coolly in the chair in the back, and they drive away. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, so with only two hours to spare, Joel and his friends put everything back before his parents get home, and everything is back to how it was. <laughs> mm -hmm. And his mom immediately... Goes and looks at her stupid glass egg. And she's like, wait a minute, something's wrong. There's a tiny hair fracture crack inside. Has Joel, like, what did you do? As her like magnifying glass. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. Uh, so... <laughs> she says, what happened to my egg? My egg is ruined. You little shit. Which is, an, I believe, an innuendo for, for uh, birth. Childbirth. Oh, no. Um. So... The egg was tied to her fertility, and now she can't have any like, mm -hmm. babies anymore? Okay. Mm -hmm. Or the egg was cracked. You could go so many. <laughs> like I told you beforehand, if you wanted to analyze this movie, you could go in so many different directions. Mm -hmm. But, um... See, this is where that part of the movie at the start, where, like, the dad realized that Joel was messing with his, uh... His oh, stereo system? Yeah, stereo system, because he has, like, the... What are they? Like, I think it's like little, he talks about the bass or something yeah, being too high. Like those, the, the equalizer little yeah. thingies were like in, should be in the exact position, but they weren't. So mm. I feel like that that's when he would have been like, this whole house looks, <laughs> looks really different. <laughs> like happens. you said, takes one step, realizes the carpet is five inches away from where it used to be, and be mm -hmm. like, what happened here? It's like a <laughs> panic attack when everything's like out of order. Do you think you could be able to... Put back every single item in, in your the house. Exact same yeah. place. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think anybody could. <laughs> no. Maybe someone with a fucking photographic memory. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. 
Um, let's see. I guess if you have carpet, some things leave like a little dent. Oh, that's true. But other, th- but they have uh, wood flooring. Mm-hmm. So. No carpet. Mm-hmm. Um, and that wood flooring is immaculate. He scratched the fuck out of it <laughs> with that clock. Do you think they stole the bank teller from the basement? <laughs> yeah, he had to buy that back, too. <laughs> it was only like 10 bucks, though. Oh, yeah, he's not a lot. He was dead. <laughs> oh, God. But they didn't kill him. He was dead long before because Joel didn't feed him. <laughs> um, but, yeah, then the dad's like, we'll get another one, honey. Don't worry. We'll have Joel pay, f- pay for it. And then he orders Joel to go outside and rake some leaves. Which he does. He puts on his uh, his sweet uh, Ray Ban <laughs> shades and lights up a smoke. Mm-hmm. And after because he's cool now. Yeah. Well, he's Joel. Mm-hmm. Well, he wishes he was Joel. <laughs> now he's just Joel doing the leaves. Um, Gross. I know, right? <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna even go into it. Never mind. <laughs> um, then Joel's dad appears and tells him about the Princeton guy calling, and. He's accepted! Yay! Yay. See, kids, if you want to get in someplace, bribe your way. Exactly. Um, And Dad hugs Joel, and he's like, I'm proud of you, son. And later, Joel meets Lana at a restaurant, and he asks if uh, Guido and Vicky... Or no, he asks if the night that they had sex on the train was a setup for Guido and his gang to come by and steal everything. But... She doesn't really deny it. She also doesn't really say that she did it. She so, doesn't. She just get, doesn't answer, does she? So I think he's like. Um, he said, "Was it a setup?" And she looks suspicious, but she says no. So I don't believe her. Because, he doesn't either. Yeah. Deep down, he knows. Yeah, but he's like, "I made a friend along the way," <laughs> and risky business and is about making the friends along the way. So. What? He may have gotten the pregnant, so he's kind of obligated now. Yeah. Maybe that's what she was talking about when she was talking about their future. <gasps> Risky Business sequel. <laughs> After Tom Cruise is done filming Top Gear, Top Gear, Top Gun 2, and the two next Mission Impossibles, he needs to make Risky Business 2. Mm-hmm. Electric bugaboo. <laughs> um, let's see. And then Joel says that he just doesn't want her to get hurt. Mm-hmm. And then it cuts to them walking through a park, and Lana isn't wearing a bra. <laughs> okay, I was I felt bad for noticing that too. <laughs> <laughs> it's very noticeable. Um, and she says that she'd just like to spend the evening together. And Joel's like, "Okay, sure. How much you have on you? Because mm-hmm. they're playful buddies. Uh-huh. <laughs> they're friends." And it ends with a feel-good ending. With Joel and Lana joking around and reciting the whole uh, thing that Joel did earlier where he was like, can I write you a check? I got a savings bond in the bank. Mm -hmm. But uh, with the roles reversed and a Joel voiceover saying, my name is Joel Goodson. I deal in human fulfillment. I grossed over $8,000 in one day. Isn't life grand? Was that the... Did they use that same thing for their... uh... For the one they used, the yeah. ending? Oh, okay. The end. Except it isn't! I don't know why I pointed. I, <laughs> I do so much physical stuff, even though this is a podcast. <laughs> um, because there's an alternate director's cut ending, which was apparently released in, like I think, this version, the 25th anniversary. Um, it's the exact same, except until the halfway point in the diner scene, Lana says, Why does it have to be so tough? Which more or less reveals that she was in on it with Guido. Mm -hmm. And Joel... uh, And she says that Joel will continue to do better things, but basically she's stuck in her shitty position. Yeah. Uh, Then Joel asks her to come closer to him, and she comes over and sits on his lap, and they embrace. And it fades to black as the voiceover plays, and then fade to credits. It's kind of a downer ending. Yeah. But That's that's why I kind of like it more. Yeah. Feels more raw. But it doesn't really I don't know. I feel I like it doesn't it adds, fit the rest of the film. Yeah. If the rest of the film was like that sort of realistic downer feeling, mm-hmm. maybe. But I like the theatrical. You go alternate cut? <laughs> uh 
if I had to make the decision to to which one I would use, I would use the theatrical one. But which one do you like? I like the the more somber one. Oh, really? I like it's more mature. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that a, a solid black coffee you're drinking, Saul? <laughs> well, yes. I like this cover. It's like yeah, that's cool. Drawn. They should go back to that. The poster covers being like painted or drawn or something. Yeah. But in conclusion, pimping ain't easy. Nope. And that is it for the discussion segment of this podcast. Let's move on to afterthoughts. Do you want to start off with any afterthoughts you have? Um, I, the music was like really good. That's what I have right here. <laughs> Best soundtrack so far. Yeah, way better than losing it. Oh, God, Even though yes. it's catchy, it's just... <laughs> There was just nothing else going for, going for that movie. No, besides Tom Cruise being in it. Yeah. Um, the music, the soundtrack was composed by the German synth slash electronic band called Tangerine Dream, which everybody should check out. I love the name. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to talk about the symbolism of the egg? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I uh, think it's loss of innocence. Yeah, because he... Because it's cracked at the end. Yeah. So. Like him. Yeah. Mentally. <laughs> <laughs> He's going insane. Yeah. Prequel to... Um, Taps? I was going to say Endless Love. Oh. Oh, yeah. As we've established prior, all these films Are take connected. place in... Yeah. <laughs> so... The Tom Cruise Cinematic Universe, the TCU. Oh, so, yeah. So, like... Does he... Does he graduate by the end of the movie? Or is it just, like... No, we don't see that. We, because maybe he could have suggested that little arson thing to David after this movie. Because you know he's in that what the fuck <laughs> attitude now, huh? Oh my god, <laughs> we're geniuses. <laughs> Any other things? Any other thoughts? Um, I really liked the movie. I liked it. It wasn't bad. It's just it's sometimes the the plot felt a little weird. Yeah, there's plot holes. The yeah. Lore. <laughs> there's a lot. It also seems like a daydream. Yeah, it does. I, I, I would have liked if Vic, or was it? Vic? Lana? No, no. Uh, Jackie. Jackie. If Jackie was part of it more. I yeah. felt like she was gonna be, but like. Wasted just... opportunity not having Jackie come back. Yeah. Because, I don't know, I think the two best characters are Barry and Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> That's what. Risky Business 2 is about <gasps> the, what they were doing the whole time. <laughs> oh, God. And see actors that not de-aged. <laughs> um, okay, so let's move right into the ratings. IMDb gave this a 6.8 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 96, which is certified fresh. Nice. Uh, 75% on Metascore, and Roger Ebert, famous American film critic, gave it four out of four stars. Nice. Because his system is out of four. That's kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, but here, at the Tom Cruise... I'm sorry, let me try it again. I said the wrong name of the podcast. <laughs> here at the Cruising Altitude podcast, we have a much more reasonable rating system. Yeah. It's out of 21 teeth. Because at any given moment, whenever Tom Cruise smiles, he shows at least 21 teeth. <laughs> <laughs> what would you give this out of 21, Sol? Mm. And remember, we did ha add those uh, caveats of um, <laughs> teeth with filling or... Um, yeah. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, with cavities, cavities or something. <laughs> so what would you give it out of 21? Um, let's see. I always, I always have to do the math. Like, uh, what is half? Like, what would be like a, a C? Um, I would give it uh, 15 teeth and like one filling, but it's like a like like a top quality, you know? Oh. Well, I forgot what it's called. Um, like a, the material? Like gold filling or something? Or like a... No, there's just a horse... Not porcelain. porcelain. That would hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, I forgot the name of it. Just but a like... fancy high price dental filling yeah. that you wouldn't be able to get in like Mexico or something. Mm -hmm. At out of twenty one. So what was it again? Fifteen plus that really okay. nice filling. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I I give it a twenty out of twenty one. Really? I really enjoyed it. I think it's more so the soundtrack. Yeah. I like synth music, so it swayed me over. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I really enjoyed this film. I feel like the Rotten Tomato score was like raised because of just that one scene with uh 
with him dancing. <laughs> oh yeah, Which, definitely. To be fair, it is a good. Scene. It is iconic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think the first time I saw a reference to it was like Home Alone. Did they? Did he maybe, do it in Home I Alone? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. It was some kid. <laughs> um, also here at the Tom Cruise. Fuck. Also here at the <laughs> Cruising Altitude podcast. We have begun rating the movies in order that we like them. So, currently on the list, we have Endless Love in first, Taps in second. Wait, the... we put that one first? Didn't we? Was that me? Yeah, because remember, we flipped the Tom Cruise coin. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Our branded Tom Cruise coin. One side's his teeth. The other side is the golden jet that the aliens came to Earth on in Scientology. Mm, okay, okay. Um, but Endless Love is in first as our favorite. Followed by Taps, The Outsiders, and Losing It. <laughs> Where would you put Risky Business? I'm going to say at the top. Uh, damn. I don't know why I put Endless Love after, like, before Taps. Damn. What was I thinking? And The Outsiders, like, that low, too? Maybe, we, we can always switch around the scores. Maybe yeah. I just put this in wrong. Who knows? <laughs> Who's to say, really? Um, I would put it second. It was good. It was good. I think maybe I put Endless Love first because I just like liked how wacky and insane David is. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to keep Endless Love as number one or Taps as number one? But then Tom is like even more insane than Taps, which I loved. Uh... Since you liked it so much, I would say we can put Risky Business in first. Okay. And then... Followed by Endless Lover Taps, because you won the taps off. Oh, yeah. Because remember, we flipped the coin, because I wanted taps to be first, but you wanted Endless Love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll put taps second. Okay. I actually don't know how to change this. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just going to put right here, taps second... Risky business first. So the new um, list is now Risky Business, followed by Taps, followed by Endless Love, followed by The Outsiders, and then way at the bottom is losing it. Where it belongs. <laughs> yep, it belongs in the <laughs> trash at the very bottom. Uh, you can view this list if you'd like. I'll give you a link in the description. I feel like it now that he's starting to get like more... Uh famous mm -hmm. by this point the movies are gonna get better yeah so the it's gonna be a the possibility tougher. for something to beat losing it as a worse <laughs> movie oh uh, i don't know i think if we get to the mummy uh, maybe maybe uh, maybe not though because that's older tom cruise where he has more to do mm -hmm. Who knows? <laughs> we'll see never know yeah also i'm not really familiar with most of his films from the mid 80s to like until mission impossible in like the 90s so yeah. It's like a... Who knows what's in there? <laughs> <laughs> now we move on to everyone's favorite segment, Tom Cruise News. Uh, not a lot, as per usual, it seems. <laughs> Except I saw this headline. Tom Cruise demands Mission Impossible staffers get in shape for sequels. Staffers? Meaning... I guess people who worked on the film or who are working on it. Uh, huh. It's like everybody. Cut it. Cut it. Kind of an odd request, but okay. I like it. You should care for your body and work out. Yeah, that's true. It makes you feel better. Mm -hmm. um, in synopsis, the article was about Tom Cruise allegedly demanding everyone get in shape for the Mission Impossible sequels. I discovered that it's a fake story. Oh. Yeah. S some dude that just, like, felt... Someone that hates and wants to besmirch the good name of Thomas <laughs> Cruise Mapather the Fourth. Mm-hmm wrote this story and um although we here at the cruising altitude con what I, was i about to say contest <laughs> it's after five so i'm having that stroke you got to get me to the hospital <laughs> um although we here at the cruising altitude podcast do not condone gossip i must thank gossipcop.com for discovering that the story was fake these guys are true uh true journalists mm-hmm Thank you for your journalistic integrity. Unlike some other news outlets. Yeah. TMZ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that brings us to the end of this episode of the Cruising Altitude Podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and Podbean, assuming I uh, get the subscription for more space. 
<laughs> um, if you want to help me get that subscription, um, I think it's like 10 bucks a month or something, make sure to head on over to my Patreon. I'll uh, leave a link in the description or something. It's patreon.com slash videos. I don't really know how the Patreon URLs work. <laughs> um, but anyway, you can find us on all the social medias, maybe at the Cruising Altitude Podcast, and on Twitter, at Cruising Podcast, at Smokies Videos, and make sure, of course, to follow Tom Cruise, at Tom Cruise. Please do. And on Instagram, you can follow Saul's meme account, at Dio underscore Sama underscore Art. Mm -hmm. Join us next month for 1983's. This is actually, next month is going to be the last time we'll be in 1983. No. The last four films were from 1983. Nice. Uh, so make sure to join us next month for all the right moves. And, uh... These are all very suggestive names. They are. Losing it. Taps. Business. <laughs> <laughs> the Outsiders. Oh, that's a weird one. Healthy. Mm. But uh, we'll see you next month. Uh, me, Tom Cruise, S. Sue, Tom Cruise. <laughs> what? Bye. <laughs> <laughs>